Thanks to AI, it's now easier than ever to create your very own documentary. In fact, the video that you're watching right now was completely made with AI. I've been experimenting with making hyper-realistic macro shots, and in this video, I will show you exactly how you can do this too using Nano Banana, C Dream, and VO Dream 1. With those tools, you can use start and end frames to make transformation videos and hyper-realistic close-ups of any type of insect that you want to choose. Now for this video specifically, I'm using OpenArt as it has all the tools that I'm using. And if you want to follow along, then make sure to sign up to my free community where I will be sharing all the prompts that I'm using. And in this video, I will show you exactly how you can do this too using Nano Banana, C Dream, and VO 3.1. With those tools, you can use start and end frames to make transformation videos and hyper-realistic close-ups of any type of insect that you want to choose. There are four different things that we need to do in order to make our videos. First, we need to define what we want to do. Then we need to draft up our prompt. Then we generate the image and then we generate our video from that image. Now, there are a few different techniques here. Let's start off by picking the model that we will be choosing for this in order to create our shots. So for this first example that I have for you, I want to do one about a praying mantis. First, we got to pick the model that we're using. Now I'm switching between Nano Banana and Sea Dream 4.0. I'm going with Sea Dream 4.0 for most of the shots that I do, as if you go underneath here in the output settings, you can output it in 4K. Also make sure that you put it in the aspect ratio that you want to use for your videos. So if it is like for Instagram, you can do like nine by 16. Or for me, this is YouTube, so 16 by nine makes sense. Then for prompting, I will explain to you how to prompt in a minute. I will also show you how you can use ChatGPT as well to make better prompts. But first, let me just briefly explain this prompt that we're using right here. So we're going for an ultra extreme macro photograph of a spider wrapping its prey in fine silk. Every strand sharply visible and glistering in a soft filtered light. Focus on the spider's eye and the front legs weaving the web. Hyper detailed textures, natural color tones, shallow depth of field, smooth bokeh background, and a cinematic natural realism. And lastly, we're ending it with crisp and photo real clarity. Now, all of this, you don't need ChatGPT. You just need to know what to prompt. First thing that's important is saying extreme macro photograph. Then the insect. So this is kind of like type of shot then the character or the object or person, what it is doing is what I'm describing right here. And then I'm adding in like small details to personalize it a bit. So we're saying like sharply visible, glistening in soft filtered light, focus on the spider's eye. Like these are all like extra details to make the shot more personalized to your wishes. So now we got this prompt and then you can export a number of different images. I would say the more images you generate, the better because that way you have more options to pick from. So so I will always put these in like four and then you hit create. So there we have it. This is the best image that I got from that prompt. And now we can use this same image and use it as a reference image to get an even more extreme close up of the spider. Also apologies if you are scared of spiders. So now we're using this as a subject reference and now it's adding it in there. And then we change up a prompt and we're gonna say create an extreme ultra macro of the eyes of the spider. So now it's gonna zoom in even more without losing any quality. Then we hit create. Here we have an extreme close up of the eyes of the spider. Now look how like spooky this looks already and look how sharp it looks. This is already in like 4K, but if you want to upscale this even further, you can. I don't know why you should, but this already looks really good. Now let's do another one of that same spider because I want to capture like more details of that same insect. So I'm just using simple wording here. Create an extreme ultra macro of the image of the right leg of the spider. So now we hit create and then we get an image like this. So there we go. Here's the hairy spiky leg of a spider. I don't know if I want to see that like up close. Like I like annoying as spiders are already. They're also kind of like fascinating how crazy they look. So there you have it. Now we have like three different angles of that same spider. You could do this for any animal basically. Now we're doing it for insects, but you could also do it for a penguin or for a cat or whatever you have in mind. You can get that extreme level of detail just by prompting it. So let me show you one more example. So for this next example, kind of dark, but I want to use an example of a decaying dragonfly. If you're not sure what to prompt, I have this ChatGPT bot that you can use. So for example, I can ask it to make an image prompt of a 
dragonfly on a jungle floor and then it will start writing the prompt for me so you could use that prompt too but the best thing is to give as much details as you can remember all you need to do is you need to describe the type of shot your object person or your character then the type of action that's happening and then you add in some more details that is in theory the prompt format that we are using for all of these prompts here so i had already like generated this so let me just explain the prompt that i use so extreme close up macro shot of a dead dragonfly lying on a jungle floor then i have some extra details regarding the description of the dragonfly like this is my ChatGPT prompt that gave it more details then it's adding in some extra ground details and again it's also using that soft bokeh type of style that all of these macro images and videos have so this essentially is our start frame that we can use for image to video generator as we have a start frame we also need an end frame to get the exact type of transition that we want to have happen so let's say right now it's dead and i want to have it decaying then we need an image like this where i just said like make it the dragonfly look like a exoskeleton and extremely decayed so here we can see it's like falling apart now we can use this in our next segment which is the image to video part where we use a combination of start and end frame but also just a start frame in both google vo 3.1 and also cling 2.5 so for this also the reason why i'm using open art is i can just simply go over to video now in video we're gonna go to image to video here we select the vo3 and in there you have vo3.1 this works as good on like kling 2.1 i would say you could try a number of different tools here so don't feel like you need to use google vo3.1 i would say just experiment with it and let's start off with or spider so i have my spider right here as a start frame then i have version 3.1 i have audio on then i have the resolution to 1080p aspect ratio 60 by 9 and then you can choose between fast and normal fast again is a little bit faster also a lot cheaper normal takes like more time to process which makes the video slightly better but honestly fast works just as good now for prompting this i would prompt this manually because you get more control you can let ChatGPT do it for you but if you have no idea what you want to put in there then ChatGPT is going to come up with something that you might not agree with so i put in this prompt and i will explain you why ultra macro video of a spider wrapping in its prey in silk the camera stays close shifting focus between the spider's eye and the moving silk threads Soft filtered light passes through the web, highlighting tiny details, realistic motion, natural colors, and smooth depth transitions. So this whole prompt, it is a bit long, but it's essentially saying that the spider is just wrapping the prey in silk. And then it's just giving a few camera details of what I want to have happen with the focus. And then I can give it my prompt and I can hit create. So that gave me this result. So the beauty of this is let's say you're not happy with the first few seconds it doesn't matter because we have so many different angles of that same spire like we have the close up of the eyes we have the close up of the leg moving we can make fast cuts in between it and that's what i notice with most good looking ai stuff is it has different cuts so it can only pick the parts where you think it looks good if it messes up don't throw that video away you can still use it use the part that looks good and then switch to a next camera angle by having another generation so i did the exact same thing here with the close-up of the spider i just said like hey it's eating something and then we have that close-up of the eyes and then we have also the legs just moving slightly and we can use that for our combined video let's do a different insect for this one so here i have an image of these ants and they're working together to build their nests so what i want to do is i want to give it a prompt so for my prompt i'm gonna give it a bit more of a detailed prompt again so let me explain how works so here i got my prompt of ultra macro studio video of ants working together to build their nest grains of soil clinging on their legs fine textures visible on their bodies captured from a low angle beneath them cinematic lighting shallow depth of fields realistic natural tones and crisp details fading into soft blur now with that prompt i generated this video
Okay, let's switch it up a bit. So with start and end frame, you actually have a lot more control over the exact outcome of your video. So for this first example, we have a dragonfly that is slowly decomposing. Now for the other example, we have a transition of a little caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. So first, let me start off by the dragonfly. It's actually super easy. We're gonna use the same images that I just generated. So that's the dragonfly like this. And then we have the other dragonfly that is a bit more decomposed. So we're gonna switch over to end frame. Then we're gonna upload it right here. And now we have the start and end frame. So for this one, I'm actually switching over from video tree to Kling 2.1 because I think Kling 2.1 is a bit better at prompt adherence, at least in my experience. So for this one, we're gonna give it a different prompt. Here, we're gonna be a bit more detailed. So we want to have a fixed camera angle. So that's what I say at the beginning. So the prompt will be followed. Then we're having it of the object that is laying on the jungle floor. The camera is never moving, just want to be very specific about that. And then ants and worms move in the time lapse and a hyperlapse crawling over the dragonfly, eating parts of it and coming in and out of the soil. The dragonfly slowly decays in the same frame until mostly the exoskeleton is left. The day shifts from night back to day with smooth lighting changes. Again, make sure that you have the fixed camera position or if you want to have a hyperlapse, you can have or prompt it to do, to do like a hyperlapse of your scene. By doing this prompt, I got this result right here. So we have like all of the insects running over it and it's slowly transitioning into the exoskeleton. You can regenerate this a couple different times. For example, I did it another time right here and it might turn out a little bit better. So here it's a bit more aggressive, but I didn't quite like this one. So that's what I do. I generate these scenes like two or three times to get the best results. Now for this transformation video, it's actually super simple. It's using the exact same format. So let me just break it down in terms of the generations. So we're starting off with this like larvae or egg that is transforming into a caterpillar. It is literally using start frame and end frame. Then we move over to that next bit, which is the caterpillar growing bigger. That is exact same method. Then it goes over to become a cocoon i believe it's called and this one was a bit wasn't the best but it's still usable if we like fastly edit it and now we have it transform into a matured cocoon and then it transforms into a butterfly all of that can be done with AI. If you want to check out my custom GPT, then join my free community. I will upload all my YouTube assets in that community. It's also the best place to hang out, to chill, talk about AI, and also help each other improve in this space. I'll also leave a link to OpenArt in the description down below if you want to try it out. And if you want to know the reason why I'm using a tool like OpenArt, then check the video that's on the screen right now, where I compare all the major all-in-one AI tools and see who is the best.